Yeah, so what I'd like to do now is uh, concretize the general principles, ideas, and institutions that you've both now so eloquently talked about. And for the sake of our students, I'd like you uh, both to identify some, some of the, the pinnacles, uh, the high points of, of Western civilization, particularly in the, in the humanities and, and the arts. So I'd like now to ask each of you to identify uh, one work of philosophy, literature, music, painting, and architecture that you think symbolizes the, the best, the high points of Western civilization. So, well, philosophically, one has to, I think, has to start with Aristotle and, and then the Enlightenment, the Enlightenment thinkers, whether it be uh, John Locke or, or even some of the French encyclopedists of the 18th century. Um, I think that, that they are the ones that really created the modern world uh, from an ideological perspective. Uh, and I would add Ayn Rand to that list uh, of, of philosophers because I think she is crucial to the preservation of those ideas in the modern era. Uh, but they are the ones that created Western civilization from a philosophical perspective. Um, it, you know, starting with Descartes and, and, and on into the Enlightenment. Uh, what was it? Philosophy? Philosophy, literature. So literature, I think literature peaks in, in, the, in, the, in the 19th century. Uh, I would say, I mean, my favorite, and I think who represents, uh, represents much of the spirit of Western civilization would be Hugo in, in, uh, in, um, in France, Victor Hugo, a book like Les Miserables in 93 with big clashes of values and big emotions and, and fighting for values you believe in and, and uh, uh, you know, and recognizing the importance of individuals and the importance of individual values and being willing to fight for those individual values. I think, I think is crucial. Uh, in sculpture, I would say, you know, to me, nothing beats Michelangelo's David. Uh, it, it predates, in a sense, the philosophical understanding of what the Enlightenment or what Western civilization constitutes, but it represents that courageous individual. It represents facing reality boldly with courage as an individual standing up to, to, to giants, right? Standing up to Goliath. While it's a biblical story, there's nothing in the sculpture itself that is of faith or of religion. It is a pu purely, you know, secular piece, uh, both materially and spiritually. And I think it, it kind of foreshadows, it foreshadows the spirit of the founding fathers in establishing this country. It foreshadows that idea of pursuit of happiness, of pursuit of values, of freedom. Uh, uh, all in that, uh, all in that sculpture. Architecture, you know, I, I would say that would be later in the, in, I, I would say it would be somebody like Frank Lloyd Wright, who's breaking the mold, doing something new, presenting an architecture for a modern world, for a world engaged, very individualistic, homes that are different, homes that are designed for a client in a particular place, taking into account the environment, very much taking into account the personal, personal uh, values, personal, and the freedom to be able to create something new and to break the mold from the past, and yet something that's very functional, and it has a beautiful aesthetic. So the, the, the combination of, of functionality and aesthetic value comes together, I think, in Frank Lloyd Wright. So I think all of those are representative of a you know, of many, many, many painters and sculptors and playwrights and novelists who represent what Western civilization, what these ideas have managed to produce. Yeah. Philos it's a great, it's a great, sorry, a great conversation. I, I, it's like a parlor game, this. The, the, <laughs> yeah. the high points of Western civilization. Go, yeah. Anyway, go on. Yeah. Philosophy, literature, music, painting, and architecture. Uh, Plato, I think that, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> philosophy. I mean, it's it's extraordinary. Uh, literature, uh, the works of Shakespeare. Uh, uh, some genius uh, miracle uh, of those plays, and I would couple them. And you'll notice that almost all my responses are earlier, <laughs> uh, a lot earlier. Um, I will couple that with the essays of Michel de Montaigne. 
uh, which you may not have heard of, but which you can get anywhere. They are extraordinary, funny, erudite, individualistic, philosophical. They range from, from all sorts of topics, uh, from big ones to tiny ones. And in Montaigne and Shakespeare, the thing that you notice is, and you see this particularly in Shakespeare, even the little minor figures, they're fully realized characters. What you see in the West is the value, an increasing value of the individual character, their personality, what makes them different. Not whether they're virtuous or not, not whether they fit into some mold or other, but just because they're themselves, there's value in themselves, even when you laugh at them, even when you uh, despise them, there's an individuality here. And that really that's, that's rare in the world. I think you see it first really in, weirdly enough, in Augustine, in his Confessions, which is a shockingly modern understanding of his own life and relationship to God. Um, architecture. I always imagine being a, uh, a, a medieval peasant on a pilgrimage. Uh, and you're walking to a pilgrimage to uh, a cathedral, Chartres Cathedral in France, and you see it looming in the distance. All the normal buildings are small and wooden and, and destructible, and then suddenly what looks like this extraordinary towering spaceship has just arrived on Earth. And inside you go into this cavernous world of different lights, of, of the stained glass windows changing your perception of reality, of the sacred at the altar. Uh, this, if you, if you have never been to Chartres Cathedral in your life, put it on your bucket list. It's an astonishingly beautiful uh, thing to experience viscerally uh, and personally. Um, Painting, I think I would uh, split between all of Rembrandt's self-portraits, which are, again, incredibly moving and also a function of this, this growing sense of a Western understanding of individuality and through time. And then I would also place Picasso's Guernica, which was the moment in the 20th century, really, when the, uh, during the Spanish Civil War in particular, where the sheer horror of warfare, which has defined human societies from the get-go. There was a moment in the West in which this was decided that this was too awful to contemplate anymore, and we had to find a different way of coexisting. Um, was there one more? Music. Music. Oh. Uh, uh, Allegoris Miserere. Yeah. Uh, I'm with, I'm with Does you, anybody uh, else heard like Christmas <laughs> around? Um, it, it's I once uh, I was lucky enough to uh, it it it's it's done in it's it's Ash Wednesday that it's done. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a Lenten, and it's a it's an astonishing thing because it's 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 one of the few choral. It's all choral. There's no instruments, just voices, and uh, it's set in four different parts of whichever chapel it's being played in. And I remember when I first went to one, uh, I'd never heard it before. And there's a moment at which the treble, which is the boys, yeah. uh, uh, hits a note that you just did not believe existed on earth. <laughs> yeah. And the, the overwhelming sense of some exquisite, exquisite transcendence overwhelms you. Um, and I would say that, and really, um, I mean, anything by Mozart, <laughs> uh, pretty much. But, uh, but for, for me, if I, that Allegri's Miserere uh, is, 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 a, is, a mo is, and again, that's a long time ago. Yeah. Do you know how we have that piece of music in the Western world today? I, I, I know there's a story to it, but tell me, remind yeah. me. The, the story involves a young Mozart. So Mozart was in Rome with his father and uh, the Miserari was only allowed by the Pope to be played in the Vatican. Um, and Mozart was there as a very young boy. He was 14 or 15 years old, I believe. And he heard it and went back to his apartment and wrote it out by memory. 
And that's how that's we have a piece of music in the Western world today. Yeah. Because Otherwise, it was regarded as so, so extraordinary that it could only be restricted to the special place. Precisely. Um, and that, that tells you something about even then that they understood quite how specifically beautiful that was. Yeah. Yeah, so again, I'll be later and more secular. Uh, in my preferences. So uh, in music, I would definitely say the peak is the peak of the Romantic era with Brahms and Chopin and, oh. and, and yeah, I, <laughs> I figured. <laughs> <laughs> Never uh, mind. Brahms, Chopin, Tchaikovsky, anything from Beethoven, uh, from Beethoven to the uh, early 20th century to me, that is the peak achievement in terms of uh, music and I encourage everybody to try it out even though it's not, not as sexy today, I guess. So I'm starting now to detect some differences. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourownbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...